Hi friends. Welcome to the YouTube channel DM Info Videos. We are here today with an interesting new video to enlighten the viewers. Continue watching this video till the end so that anybody will come to know about the much unfamiliar information, and wait eagerly for the episodes to publish regularly. Please like and comment, share, subscribe and tap the bell icon for receiving the notifications on the upcoming videos. Trust that everyone must have watched the previous videos that were published. If not, please click the links given below to know them and share. Episode 8 In this episode, we will learn about nanomaterials and nanotechnology. It will speak about nanomaterials in general and their properties, importance and uses and advancement of nanotechnology in civil engineering construction. Nanomaterials can occur naturally, be created as the by-products of combustion reactions, or be produced purposefully through engineering to perform a specialized function. Natural, natural sources of nanoparticles include combustion products, forest fires, volcanic ash, ocean spray, and the radioactive decay of radon gas. Natural nanomaterials formed through weathering processes of metal or anion-containing rocks and at acid mine drainage sites. Natural organic, the structure of chalk, viruses, protein, capsid, the wax crystals covering a lotus leaf, spider and spider mite silk, butterfly wing scales, natural colloids, milk, blood, horny materials, hair, beaks, horns, and even our bone matrix are all natural organic nanomaterials. Natural inorganic nanomaterials occur through crystal growth in the diverse chemical conditions of the Earth's crust. For example, Clays display complex nanostructures due to the anisotropy of their underlying crystal structure. Fires represent complicated reactions and can produce pigments, cement, fumed silica etc. Because nanotechnology is a recent development, the health and safety effects of exposures to nanomaterials and what levels of exposure may be acceptable are subjects of ongoing research. Of the possible hazards, inhalation exposure appears to present the most concern. World Health Organization Guidelines WHO published a guideline on protecting workers from the potential risk of manufactured nanomaterials at the end of 2017. WHO used a precautionary approach as one of its guiding principles. It means that exposure has to be reduced, despite uncertainty about the adverse health effects when there are reasonable indications. It highlights by recent scientific studies that demonstrate the capability of nanoparticles to cross cell barriers and interact with cellular structures. Created or produced, they can have different physical and chemical properties to their bulk form counterparts. Nanoparticles engineered materials designed for getting significant structural strength, chemical sensitivity, conductivity, and optical properties. They may be in the form of particles, tubes, rods or fibers. Nanomaterials are any material of a nano-sized thickness of less than 100 nanometers, nanometers. Nanomaterials exist in different dimensions, not only because they can be one atomic layer thick, but by how their electrons can be confined to flow in a certain number of sizes. For example, 2D materials have their electrons confined in one direction, so the electrons move in two directions, hence the name. The same principle applies for 1D and 0D materials, which have their electrons confined in two and three dimensions, respectively, and their electrons can move in one and zero directions, respectively. So, let's look at some examples. 2D materials Anatomic 2D materials There are many types of anatomic 2D materials, such as German NA made from germanium atoms, tin, silicon, phosphorus and, of course, carbon. Graphene is the most practical and closest material to commercialization, while others are still theoretical materials. However, they possess an excellent array of optical, physical and electrical properties that make them useful for a wide range of applications. 1D materials Nanotubes Nanotubes, be they carbon nanotubes or inorganic nanotubes, are materials that are elongated in one direction. Nanotubes direct electrons along the elongate axis and come in many forms, including single-walled nanotubes SWNT, multi-walled nanotubes MUNT, chiral nanotubes, armchair nanotubes and zigzag nanotubes. 
Nanowires Nanowires, known as quantum wires, are well-known 1D materials. Again, nanowires are elongated in one direction. The most common are silver nanowires, which are also known to be highly electrically conductive. Nanowires exhibit many different quantum effects, which have made them ideal for various electronic applications alongside the unidirectional electron movement. 0D materials quantum dots Quantum dots are a widespread and valuable type of nanoparticle, where the electrons are confined in all three directions. Quantum dots are small semiconducting particles that have been extensively used in displays and solar cells. Quantum dots emit a specific wavelength of light when they encounter either light or electricity. Many quantum dots can be easily tuned. Quantum dots composed of cadmium, such as cadmium selenide, cadmium selenide, are the most comprehensive class of quantum dots studied. Nanoparticles overall, nanoparticles come in many forms. Some of them are single element nanoparticles, such as silver and gold nanoparticles which used in medical imaging, metal oxide nanoparticles, including titanium dioxide nanoparticles used in white paint formulations, amphiphilic nanoparticles such as Janus particles, which operated as stabilizers. Janus particles are an exciting class of nanoparticles. One half of the surface is different to the other. These two surfaces differ in their external receptors, surface charge, and magnetism. Nanoscience and nanotechnology. Nanoscience is the study of nanomaterials used in chemistry, biology, physics, materials science, and engineering. Nanotechnology physicist Richard Feynman is the father of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the term given to those areas of science and engineering where a phenomenon occurs in the nanometer scale and is utilized in the design, characterization, production of materials, structures, devices, and systems. Nanotechnology refers to the manipulation of individual atoms and molecules by engineering matter at the atomic level. Nanomaterials can also be integrated with biological materials, producing new structures with properties of both types of materials. There are two main types of approaches to nanotechnology, the top-down approach, the bottom-up approach. The top-down approach involves taking larger structures that are either reduced down in size until they reach the nanoscale or deconstructed into their composite parts. The bottom-up approach is where materials are constructed from the atomic or molecular components. Because nanotechnology is a recent development, the health and safety effects of exposures to nanomaterials and what levels of exposure may be acceptable are subjects of ongoing research. Of the possible hazards, inhalation exposure appears to present the most concern. It means that exposure has to be reduced, despite uncertainty about the adverse health effects when there are reasonable indications. It highlighted in the recent scientific studies that nanoparticles' capability of nanoparticles to cross cell barriers and interact with cellular structures. Importance of nanotechnology in engineering. The question of where nanotechnology will take us in engineering should be considered not only for enhancing material properties and functions but also in the context of energy conservation. It is an essential prospect since a high percentage of all energy used, e.g., 41% in the United States, is consumed by commercial buildings and residential houses by applications such as heating, lighting, and air conditioning. The self-cleaning feature made it possible to use micron-sized coatings and surface treatments, e.g. Teflon, polysiloxane-based coatings, etc. This feature has become a marketing tool, motto for nanotechnology applications, especially for consumer markets like construction, textile, etc. Nanotechnology could allow the development of materials with better insulation properties, intelligent structures capable of optimizing energy use. Nanotechnologies developed new insulating materials. These insulating materials are nanofoams, nanostructured aerogels and vacuum insulated panels, VIPs. In addition to these materials, new lightweight, flame retardant, self-healing and resilient construction materials, e.g. new nanocomposites, are expected to be helped in their development by nanotechnology. Nanotechnology in civil engineering. 
Nanotechnology has had a significant impact in the field of civil engineering. Several applications were developed to improve the durability and enhance performance of construction components, energy efficiency and safety of the buildings facilitating maintenance and providing increased living comfort. Current pressure to reduce CO2 emissions from the manufacturing industry, for example, the production of cement is guiding research to use nanotechnology to alter the processing conditions of cement, therefore reducing these emissions. Concrete structures profit from nano-enhanced coatings that prevent graffiti and other unwanted stains from adhering to them. An enormous number of materials are enhanced using nanotechnology, some of which include glass, concrete, and steel. Nanotechnology increases the concrete life, create fire-resistant materials such as steel, and give building materials qualities such as self-healing and self-cleaning. Nanoparticles of titanium-4 oxide, aluminium oxide or ZNO are applied as a final coating on construction ceramics to bring this character to the surfaces. Titanium-4 oxide is being used for its ability to break down dirt or pollution when exposed to UV light and then allow it to wash off in rainwater on surfaces like tiles, glass and sanitary wear. ZNO brings UV resistance in both coatings and paints. Nano-sized aluminium oxide particles make surfaces scratch-resistant. These surfaces also prevent, decelerate the formation of bad smells, fungus and mold. Nanoparticles can also be used in coatings such as paints to give the layer. These coatings are hydrophobic and repel water from the metal pipe, self-healing, and protect the metal from saltwater attack and corrosion. Use of nanotechnology in cement, concrete, steel, glass, wood, pavement, and other areas. An example of how nanotechnology improved in cement is when the engineers at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, United States of America, patented a method to increase the lifespan of concrete in 2009. In 2007, almost one quarter of all bridges in the country were defective or obsolete altogether. The reasoning for this was the chloride and sulfate ions would infiltrate the concrete and cause internal structural damage, weakening the concrete and causing cracks. NIST engineers changed viscosity in the concrete at the micro scale. To reduce the speed at which chlorides and sulfates enter the concrete, double the life of the concrete. Concrete Concrete is a nanostructured, multi-phase composite material that ages over time. It is composed of an amorphous phase, nanometer to micrometer size crystals, and bound water. It is used in almost all construction, from roads to bridges, to buildings. Concrete can be modified in numerous ways, one of which is to add nanoparticles to it. Nanoparticles act as nuclei for cement phases, promote cement hydration due to their high reactivity, nano-reinforcement, filler, densify the microstructure to a reduced porosity. Research and development created nano-silica, nano-titanium oxide, and some studies involving nano-iron, nano-alumina and nano-clay. Each of the nanoparticles has a different action on concrete. Nano-silica improves strength, resistance to water penetration and helps control calcium leaching. Nano-titanium has been proven to assist in the self-cleaning process of concrete and provides the additional benefit of helping to clean the environment. Nano-iron has been shown to give concrete self-sensing capabilities and improved its compressive and flexible strengths. Steel steel is one of the most important building materials used today. The major problem of using steel, however, is dealing with fatigue. Fatigue can occur at stresses that are lower than the yield stress of the steel and leads to a shortening of the steel's life. The best way to reduce fatigue is to add copper nanoparticles to the steel. The copper nanoparticles can help reduce the unevenness in the steel surface, reducing the number of stress rises. Since the steel now has fewer stress rises, fatigue cracking is limited as well. Yet another steel-related issue resolved by nanotechnology is welding. Welding strength is a crucial issue. The area affected by heat in a weld can brittle and fail without warning at times. The addition of nanoparticles such as magnesium and calcium leads to solid welds. A sprayed layer on cementitious process in nanotechnology improves fire resistance. 
nanotechnology in glass, wood, and other areas nanotechnology will also have a considerable impact on the glass and, therefore, on windows. These windows are commonly called intelligent windows for marketing purposes, which implies that they are multifunctional through their energy saving, easy cleaning, UV controlling, and photovoltaic features. Glass also uses nanotechnology. Nano-titanium dioxide is used to coat for a self-cleaning property. Titanium dioxide breaks down organic wastes and compounds and because it also attracts rainwater and cleans the dirt off itself. Another use of nanotechnology is to make it fire protective. A layer of silica nanoparticles placed between two glass panels turns into a fire shield when heated. Wood is made of nanotubes or nanofibrils that is twice as strong as steel. Using these nanofibrils would lead to a new paradigm in sustainable construction since the creation and use of the material would be a part of a renewable cycle. Using this lignocellulosic could open up the possibility of self-sterilizing surfaces, internal self-repair, and electronic devices. Pavement is yet one more area that is improved by nanotechnology. Nanoscale materials can be added to existing roads to enhance features such as the hardness of the road, durability, and water and skid resistance. With the application of zinc oxide, zinc oxide, it is possible to make hydrophobic roads that cause quicker runoff and help prevent hydroplaning. Water treatment is another field where nanotechnology is used. Some of the uses of nanotechnology in water treatment include water purification separation and reactive media for water filtration. Nanotechnology helps improve water quality, availability, the viability of water resources, such as through the use of advanced filtration materials that enable greater water reuse and recycling. Nanoparticles are used to clean up contaminated areas as well. They can create new compounds that can have an impact on the environment. In the future, intelligent living spaces will be made possible via embedded sensing systems that would enable buildings to sense and act according to the environment and the user's needs. If civil engineers are aware of a way to improve people's lives everywhere and do so, they are obligated to use that information to help create a better world. Nanotechnology can lead to a more energy-efficient world with the benefits it provides to materials, as shown. Civil engineers must comply with the code of ethics and incorporate nanotechnology in their designs. In schools, teaching this is the only way for new engineers to do that. It further emphasizes that experienced engineers are obligated to supervise and develop those under them. Summary, nanotechnology offers vast amounts of enhancement in the civil engineering field. It helps in improving the efficiency and quality of building materials such as self-repairing, self-cleaning, fire protection, corrosion protection, insulation, and countless applications. Nanotechnology can even help to pick up the quality and availability of water. We look at the innovations and improvements in the construction and environmental areas and find that nanotechnology plays a vital role in civil engineering. We need to bring it into the engineering curriculum at schools. Nanotechnology is essential to the future and advancement of civil engineering with curriculum activities in schools. Thank you viewers for sparing your valuable time and watching today's video in this YouTube channel DM Info Videos. It concludes the topic on nanomaterials and nanotechnology. It must have enhanced the understanding of civil engineering, placed everyone in a new light of exposure, and inspired us to learn more. Else, online technology helps us repeatedly viewing to get the benefit. Please like, share, and subscribe for more fabulous inspirations and keep watching the videos regularly that are published on this channel. Thanks again and wishes to prosper ever.